But how do you install carpet padding over top of a concrete subfloor? What's good everybody? It's Carpet Mike here from CarpetExpertBlueprint.com and yes, I'm giving you the fast track through this final product basement to get you a little bit of motion sickness to end your night right. So first things first, we got a concrete sub for the existing tack strip is already down and the customer was kind enough to go ahead and pull out all the existing carpet for us. So we just had to show up, start dropping the pad in and get it ready for our install. So there's a number of different ways you can use to go ahead and adhere the padding to a concrete sub for but in this video we are rolling with duct tape so what I'm gonna do we're gonna unroll all these shots get everything rough cut in and then we're gonna tape all the seams now I'm using a vapor barrier padding moisture padding whatever you want to call it so the carpet slides real nice but watch this it's all out duct tape war on this one now, if you're using a traditional rebound padding, the carpet doesn't slide as nice over top of it and we had these huge wide open rooms. So in cases like that, you wanna go ahead and use an adhesive under the padding, gluing it to the concrete to make sure everything's secured properly. A couple different ways you can go about that. One, you could use a multi-purpose adhesive and make the next installer's life a living hell because when you go to pull it out, it just absolutely leaves chunks everywhere. You need a razor scraper to get it up. But if you hate carpet guys, just like I do, then you could go ahead and use that. You'll be good to go. If you want to go ahead and use something a little bit easier, you could use padding adhesive, which is basically like the equivalent of a, uh, like a contact cement that you can just put a small bead around, almost like pouring some maple syrup around the perimeter of the room, dropping the padding down on it, and that'll hold the perimeter in place. So when you slide the carpet, it doesn't shift and create a hot mess and get on top of the tack strip, all that good stuff. But with this and the moisture padding, we're just going to go ahead and duct tape those seams together, add a couple pieces of tape to random areas of tack strip, and we are good to go. The carpet's going to slide just fine over the tops of this. And when you're trimming it in, once you get everything lined up, you get your seams taped, take your knife, make sure you got a super sharp blade, and you just want to cut like a hairline gap away from the tack strip there. The reason we need a little bit of a gap is when you kick, the padding will still move a little bit no matter what you do. So you want to make sure you just have that slight gap in place so when you kick it, stretch it, whatever, it doesn't push the padding on top of the texture. Then you have to pull everything back, readjust, re-trim, all sorts of headache stuff. There's enough headaches in the industry. You don't need that. Leave a hairline gap, you're good to go. So go around, tape every single seam. When you're done, be good on them scraps. Pick up every single little pad junk you may have left behind because nothing more aggravating than getting a room of carpet installed, seeing a slight lump on it you didn't catch before, and having to peel it all back. So boom, there's the final product. You grab your tools and go. Get them out of the way and then you bring in the carpet to do that final install as always you know i absolutely appreciate you taking time to check out these videos any questions you go ahead and comment below thank you so much for tuning in and i'll see you on the next video